Welcome in the latest episode of Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. This is Ethan Skolnick. Thank you for finding us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and more. Also on Dash Radio every single night at 7 p.m. Download the Dash Radio app for free. Search for Nothing But Net, and that's where you'll find us. Also check out Five ReasonsSports.com. That's Five ReasonsSports.com. The latest Brady Hawk takeaways always up as soon as the game ends. Of course, the Five Reasons YouTube channel. We did a three-hour stream. Make sure you check that out. Lots of fun moments. We had a dozen participants on there. We got more than 11,000 subscribers, so definitely check out the Five Reasons YouTube channel, not just for the heat, but for Dolphins and other content. Also, check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. That includes our friends over at Best Ever. Find them at bstevr.com. This is where you can simulate virtually anything in the NFL and soon in the NBA. So you want to go with a former team against a current team, see how they would have done against each other, like a team from the 70s against a team that's current. Or you can swap out different players. For example, we just did one with the Dolphins where we put Will Fuller on the Dolphins last year to see how much that would have changed things for them. You can get an idea of the kind of cool things that you can simulate. They give you a full box score. They give you a game story and all that kind of cool stuff. So settle arguments in the NFL. You can do it in the NBA soon as well. Make sure that you sign up. It's free. BST evr.com and now today's bonus emergency episode one two three four five on the floor welcome to five on the floor a daily show on the miami heat and the nba featuring ethan skolnick with alex toledo and greg sylvander part of the five reason sports network All right, Ethan Skolnick back on five on the floor. A little bit different audio today. Apologize for that, but uh, hopefully we'll get it straightened by the evening. Uh, We're coming to you in the middle of the afternoon after uh, we just finished our three-hour-plus stream. The news of the day, here's the floor plan. Victor Oladipo traded to the Miami Heat for Kelly Olenek, Avery Bradley, and also a pick swap in 2022. Also, the Miami Heat acquire... Uh, Bielitsa, I'm not even trying with the first name, from Sacramento, a name that we've talked about. They give up Mo Harkless and Chris Silva. So essentially clean out four roster spots for two. That means likely buyouts are coming. We will get to that. We've got the full crew plus one today. This is basically our tech string. We've got Alex Toledo. You can follow him at Tropical Blanket. We've got Greg Sylvander, and we've got Adam Barai, who you know from Clutch Corner. All right, let, let's get right to it, and, and we'll start here um, with the news, Adam, Greg, whoever wants to jump in first on this one, how did this come about? We talked about how if they couldn't get Kyle Lowry, that Oladipo was sort of the backup option. It looks like the Rockets blinked, guys. So I have the organization's take on uh, how they pivoted from Lowry to Oladipo, but I'd love to hear Adam actually kick us off more on the Lowry angle because I feel like he has a little bit more of that side of this, and that was what had to transpire first. So from what I understand, the Heat made what felt like their final offer, but I don't think the Raptors believed them that it was their final offer. Uh, I couldn't tell you the what it was exactly, but their final offer – was something with Duncan included and filler, right? And when, you know, the Raptors pretty much figured out and realized that the Heat weren't bluffing, you know, they they tried to do a full court press and make the Sixers involved, the Lakers involved, and Pat Riley didn't budge. He didn't touch his offer since last night, and they always had the Victor Oladipo move in their back pocket as a last-minute resort and the heat look like geniuses out of it yeah i mean so like the interesting part to me was truthfully guys like it was seven minutes to deadline and i still thought the lowry thing was going to happen like i i was getting indications that it was still like on the table and being discussed it was coming down to the wire Um, obviously those things happen quicker than I have access to the information, but, um, I, I I was still the way that they, that Toronto created the roster spots. I thought that it was another indication that, that, that the deal was coming, but it didn't happen. Um, and from what I understand, um, when they evaluated what they were going to have to give up, 
in an effort to get that Lowry deal done. Um, in comparison to what they gave up for Oladipo, they just figured that at this point, uh, keep the flexibility open. They can still pursue Lowry if that's the avenue they want to go in the offseason. We'll get more into the specifics of that, but Alex, you have been the Oladipo proponent here on Five on the Floor for a while. I, I think Greg was a little bit more dubious on it. I, I was I questioned it to a certain degree. I, I know, and I've reported many times, that the organization had concerns some of the organization about kind of the way he handled things in the bubble. They, they weren't that impressed by him trying to basically join them <laughs> during the playoffs. Um, I, you know, so I don't know necessarily again, that this was a first choice, but no extension promised at this point. To me, this means you're going to get the best of Victor Oladipo over the next two to three months because he's playing for money. He's playing to prove that he belongs in this place that he wants to play in where obviously he has property and he's down here quite a bit. Um, but from a basketball fit, and then we'll get more back into the machinations of how this happened and how, to a certain extent, Pat Riley fleeced everybody again um, and came out of this day with three, with, with a, you know, a potential star player and a functional player without giving up really anything except Kelly Olynyk, uh, you know, in terms of contributions from this season. Why did you like, go back for people, why you liked the Oladipo fit with this team? And then we'll get back into sort of the back and forth about how it came about. So I've always been on this Oladipo train and I'm going to, you know, take my W here in stride. I'm going to act like a professional, like I've been there before, but I've, I've been pulling on this train for so long because it just felt like he was going to be able to be available to be had for nothing. And that was essentially the case. They, they gave up Kelly, who's obviously been, a really important player for them the past few years. He was the only guy from that 2017 summer that actually worked out. So, uh, you know, shout out to Kelly. And and only giving up him and Avery Bradley, not having to give up a single young piece, it's just incredible. Like, they really got him for nothing, essentially, when you're just talking about trade-wise. And that's why I always thought it was smart to go after him because you could make essentially buy low on somebody who's shown you that he can be an all-star, you know, knowing the injury history and that context. You might be able to turn him back into – a similar type player, maybe not at that level, but I just think you, you plug him into that starting lineup with Jimmy, Bam, Duncan, and whoever else they decide to throw in that front court. And I think he's going to be an awesome fit, like somebody else who can actually do something with the ball in their hands, who could collapse the paint a little bit. You know, understanding the shot hasn't been there this season, but I have seen him make pull-up threes at a decent enough clip before. You know, he brings great guard defense. He can guard ones and twos pretty damn well. And that point of attack defense, man, now you can actually play somebody there who can do stuff for you on offense, right? And I'm not trying to take shots at Avery Bradley, but, you know, flipping Kelly and Avery Bradley for Victor Oladipo is a W. You don't even, you didn't even have to give up stuff where you feel like you have to re-sign him to whatever price he wants. So it feels like the Heat got pretty much the, the best of all of every world here because not only that, but Lowry did not end up on the Lakers or the Sixers. Yeah. And as, as Greg, as you've talked about many times here, they basically got a do-over on the offseason. Because okay. the offseason did not, not only did they not give up young players, but the Harkless Bradley thing did not work out. Again, Avery for other reasons, Harkless because he just couldn't play. I mean, to be honest, they tried. Um, and they end up basically, again, giving up what Chris Silva, who I think they'd pretty much given up on as a prospect. Yeah. They give up Olinick to make up for their entire offseason. It's like they signed Oladipo, essentially, yeah. instead of Harkless. And, uh, and Bradley, for the exception, now, I, again, I'm going to go back to Adam here to kind of get into a little bit more of the back and forth and why Oladipo was so cheap, because I, I think it's important to, to put that into context. But I'm looking at a potential starting lineup now of Bam, maybe LaMarcus Aldridge at the four. There's a roster spot. Robinson, Butler, Oladipo. I mean, they're crowded in the backcourt now. Dragic, Hero, and Nunn. I'm assuming now Kendrick goes back to being a spot player. A good point. You have Ariza. You have Bialica, uh, And you still have Precious, who you haven't moved. Am I missing somebody? Is that – I mean, that looks to be – Andre. There's got to be somebody Iggy. I'm missing, right? Iggy. Oh, and Iggy. So you have two wings off the bench. In, you have three guards off the bench. Again, four teams. I think for now it may be Ariza. But, but you have Dragic, Hero, Nun off the bench, a reason Iggy is wings, Precious and Bialica as bigs, right? Anybody else I'm missing? No, right? That's that's pretty much it. Oh, and Akpal. Yep, KZ. Who you still and haven't Struce. And Struce and Vincent. So I, I think Dave's going to struggle to get minutes now. But 
but but let's go back through it um adam why in your view i mean they basically houston wanted oladipo in that trade they gave up karis lavert or lavert wasn't redirected to them so that they could get a couple months of oladipo and they really <laughs> they got nothing of value right <laughs> They, they lost out on Jared Allen and Karis LeVert, who were both probably worth double what Victor Oladipo was worth. They, I think they traded P.J. Tucker for more than what they got for Victor Oladipo, which is really sad. I've got to say, it, it's, it really is sad. You for Ethan. Is the James Harden Hall the worst ever, like from that perspective? I mean, I, I mean they still got four first and, yeah, and no, five the tr- pick swaps. Draft capital, no doubt. But like, they got no player players. Wise, oh, my God. Nothing. They got Kelly Olenek. That was the best who, player. Who they have to re-sign in the offseason because, yeah. again, Olytic has Miami no value wasn't. to them right now, and they can't, they can't move Olytic anywhere else now. So the, I feel bad for Kelly. I mean, to be honest, he's, he's going – I mean, he did good work with the Heat. I think we should acknowledge that. Like, like he'll, you guys he'll get to saying, mid-level somewhere. Yeah, I mean, he, he'll, he'll be fine somewhere next year. And he did good work for Miami. I, I think, like you said, of the contracts they signed during that period, he's the one I think they didn't come to regret. But they just viewed him as basically a very good third big who was asked to do more this season. But put this in the context, too. Again, you also got a Riza for nothing, right? Right. So, right. so, so you- essentially, they've added a Riza, Bialica, plus Oladipo without giving up any of the young core. They can still make decisions on Robinson and Nunn in the offseason. Nunn just got cheaper in my view, because he's going to play less the next two months of this season. So he'll, if they want to keep him, they can keep him. So they got all of that and they may still add one or two players, maybe LaMarcus Aldridge in buyouts. So essentially they gave up one player who was helping them, Kelly Olenek. And maybe Avery Bradley, if you think that he was going to regain form, but that was a pie in the sky thing. I felt like. Yeah. So, for for how for five contributors potentially yeah, it's huge it, it's it's really the only way that they could have saved this season um beyond going all in for a player like lowry or harden and 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 they tried in those fronts but otherwise i think it's really maximizing what they did have um and you know so now it'll be interesting to see how the, the lineup shake out because like you said maybe aldridge i think aldridge is a lock to come and i think it's because they promised him a starting spot and there is one right now. They have one. That, that there's nothing they got to worry about. All right, we're going to get back into more of this here in a second. Before we do, I want to tell you about another great sponsor, the Five Reasons Sports Network. It's our friends over at MyBookie. If you're betting, this is the place to do it. MyBookie.ag. MyBookie.ag. Use the code FIVE to get a bonus up to $500. It's a half match. Gives you a lot of money to play with there at the very beginning. This is the best platform. They got the most live betting options. If you want to bet during games, if the game's going a certain direction, you want to play it the other way, you want to bet the props. Some of these teams, MLB props are up there right now. If you like the Marlins, go over. So you can play any of that stuff. And this is the easiest one to get your money back. So use the code FIVE. I know Alex has been sending some folks there. Uh, I do as well. It's a place that we bet some of this stuff. You may want to take a look at the heat. Maybe not tonight. Maybe not tonight. I don't, they don't, you know, they're going to be a little bit more shorthanded tonight, even than usual. Um, but going forward, you may want to look at, take a look at Miami as this thing comes together. So go to mybookie.ag, use the code five. Um, so much else that we're going to get to here tonight, probably after the game, we're going to pot again. But uh, I'll cycle back to Adam on this one too. Toronto's position on Kyle Lowry. Um, other than, I guess, misreading the fact that Pat Riley wasn't going to blink in this situation and had another option, what 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 do you think Masai was doing there? I mean, can they really go into the offseason and now extend Kyle Lowry? Or, again, are we going to be revisiting this thing as soon as free agency opens? I think we're going to revisit the situation with, with Kyle Lowry. Uh, I think they're looking at a sign-in trade with him. I don't think they're looking at a, an extension because – to me, there's two things to look at with this trade that the Heat did. One, they basically signed Victor Oladipo through their free agency. They signed him with the guys that they sent over, which was Myers, Olenek, Silva, Bradley, Harkless, which means they sent a bunch of guys that are free agents at the end of this year. 
they still have flexibility. They're still keeping that 2021 plan intact. And there's no players. It's just Kyle Lowry. It's DeMar. It's, it's Victor Oladipo. So it's really interesting to see that they still have this plan intact. So I think Kyle Lowry, and I, I know Tim Reynolds of the AP uh, alluded to the fact that Kyle Lowry wants to be with the Heat. So I definitely think we're going to be revisiting this soon. Yeah, the interesting thing will be with that sign and trade part because like that hard cap is, and it's something I keep harking back to is that like you have Duncan and none at those low cap holds. And I don't know if they want to keep both of them, but I would imagine they'd want to keep Duncan if they're going to, you know, sign Kyle. I would imagine anyway, let's say. And um, they're not going to be able to go over the hard cap. So it'll be interesting to see if they try to actually use space to bring in Kyle, which is an interesting angle and would really make Toronto look like they have even more egg on their face. Alex, um, I mean, again, looking at it from Toronto's perspective, and we're, we're going to talk more maybe tonight about some of the other teams in the league. Boston, as we've talked about, added, added Evan Fournier at a very cheap price, two second-round picks. I think that will help them. They've needed to, to obviously build out their bench, and I, I think Fournier is probably going to finish a lot of games for them. Um, so they got better. Philadelphia uh, made one small ad as well. Um, I can't, who's the guard that they – oh, um, George Hill, a player we talked about from Miami. I do think he helps them. He's a proven playoff player. Uh, he'll fit easily there. He's a catch-and-shoot type guy who can handle a little bit, can still defend. Uh, so they got a little better. The Nets did not really do anything today. Um, That's a good you point. Know, but they've done plenty in the past. Milwaukee – uh, really didn't add anything, uh, again, of consequence. They, they got off of Torrey Craig and, and some others about a week ago. Uh, got where do you Tucker, think – I'll start with you, Alex, on this. Where do you think that this puts Miami this year? I mean, what is the, what is the, the max – what is the upside here if you get 21-5-5 five and five Oladipo? Oh, well, if you're talking about that type of Oladipo, then we're talking conference finals, baby, because <laughs> I'm not over here. Just because I wanted Oladipo to be traded here and have been on that train – for so long, I'm not 100% sure he's going to be back to that guy so quickly. Like, I just think he's a good fit in general. But if you're telling me that he's back at that level of productivity or in, just in general, then, yeah, I think they're, they're going to get back to the conference finals as long as they don't get broken along the way. Like, I think you look at this roster now, and they've got a whole lot of different ways they can go uh, rotation-wise. Like, they've got ways to be able to throw in de uh, different defensive coverages. They picked up a switchy four a week ago. Uh, you know, you got your Kelly replacement, so you don't have to worry about not having a spacing big next to Bam if you want to go that route. You know, it looks like they're going to get Aldridge, which is somebody else who obviously he's past his prime by a good amount now. But, you know, in spots here and there, he can still uh, give you spurts of offense. You can use him as a pick and pop guy, uh, a guy who you can throw the ball to in the post at the end of a shot clock. Like, I just think he'll, he'll be a pretty seamless fit in a team that doesn't need him to do a whole lot. And that's kind of a similar thing for Oladipo. Like, he doesn't have to create the whole offense. He's going to be playing off of other guys. He's going to be giving Jimmy and Bam a break. He's going to guard other guards. And as a result, like, I just think this is pretty much the best job they could have done at this trade deadline to plug all their holes. And they didn't have to give up anything to do it. So I just think that the, the deadline is a W from all around. And pretty much, like, my expectations for them are higher now, right? And we got to see how Oladipo looks. But, like, there are no excuses versus any of these teams, right, except – like I said, Brooklyn. Brooklyn is the one that's really understandable. But I really do think they can they can beat the Bucks. They can beat the Celtics. They can beat the Sixers. I'm not worried about these teams. They're gonna have to find enough shooting though. Oladipo is is going. I mean that that's still an issue. I know Kelly was not shooting the ball particularly well, but Vic's gonna have to shoot in the mid 30s from three, and some of these other guys are gonna have to come up. Um, I will say, by the way, just to just to add on to that, Oladipo has been pretty good in, in catch and shoot wise, uh, you know, for the past few years. So that's a good part about it. I, I really do think the pull up threes have kind of hurt his number. But again, somebody who can shoot pull up threes is, is another plus for this team. So I'm just excited about it all around. Now, I'm not 100 percent sure he's going to go back to that level, though. So don't hold me to that. Um, Adam, I'm going to let you close before we do here, though, Greg. Uh, do you see any scenario where they don't plug Vic right in? Like, in other words, like this lineup we're talking about, which is Bam, likely a reason to start, I would think, maybe at the four. Um, and then, and then Robinson, Oladipo, Butler. Do you see them going any other direction to kind of let Vic get his feet wet, maybe start none for a couple more games, even no after way. Vic comes in? Or you think they're going to just roll with it? No, I think four game losing streak is a perfect, perfect excuse to insert Oladipo immediately. 
Um, and again, I still think that they probably promised Aldridge a starting spot, but uh, I think Oladipo starts from the get-go. They got to see what they have. They got to see, are they going to invest in him or are they going to spend that money elsewhere? And, uh, you know, we talked about how we thought having Hero in between Kyle and Jimmy would do wonders for Tyler. I'm interested to see what Oladipo and Tyler's games and how the, how they mesh. So that's something I'll be watching as the season unfolds. We could see the Heat go small, too. We could see Jimmy play a lot more four, maybe, so you can get Duncan on the floor with Oladipo and Hero or with Oladipo and Dragic. Again, they're, they're guard heavy because they haven't had Avery Bradley this year, so they, they really haven't had that issue of trying to figure out how to plug them all in on the floor. Adam, I will let you close. Um, one second, though, before we do play prize picks tonight, prizepicks.com. Again, like with my bookie, use the code 5, F-I-V-E. This is Daily Fantasy Simplified. Um, play the single stack categories. They just added a three-pointer single stack category. So if you think your guy's going to – you think Duncan's going to go over three and a half threes tonight – you can play the three-point category in addition to the points, rebounds, and assists. It's pretty cool. So Check out cool. prizepicks.com. Just deposit 20 bucks. Play around with it. Play 10. Uh, play 10 the first time. Play Hedge it. Okay, you can do that with flex play, so you get half of your money back if you're not right. Play two combinations together. You can play different sports. You know, all kinds of different sports on there. And, of course, you can play anybody from any team. Um, Adam, I, I will let you close on it. There's been a lot of kind of doubt about Pat Riley. I, I think that got cleared up during the Jimmy Butler move um the, but they kept missing out on guys they kept missing out on guys they kept missing out on guys and then they got jimmy with no cap space for very little i mean josh richardson's a nice player but really nothing like we expected they would have to i, I think there was a little more doubt that was creeping in here should we just erase the doubt at this point it seems like he's able to do more with less than anybody in the league yeah, I don't think there should be any doubt from anybody about what Pat Riley can do. They got the guy that wanted to be in Miami from the start, and they got him for nothing. And I know, Greg, you you mentioned how much this is going to help Tyler. I think Duncan is going to feast on yes. Old Depot driving kicks. I think Duncan is the most underrated part of this. Yes. And yeah, so I think Duncan Robinson is going to – his shooting is going to come right back – with, with Old Depot giving him space to shoot. And just overall, the Heat won the trade deadline two years in a row. They got the guy that they want. And an underrated part of this, they're going to see a Victor Oladipo who's finally happy and playing where he wants to be. We've never seen that before. And playing for money. And playing for money. That's the other thing. And this gives them more time to evaluate Duncan, Nunn, and Oladipo to figure out what direction they want to go. I, I don't see how this could be anything other than a win. Again, here's how we close. No risk. They, they, have, they have essentially given up over the past three weeks. Kelly Olenek in the last year of his contract, Myers Leonard, who they needed to get rid of because of everything that happened, Avery Bradley, who wasn't really playing for them, Mo Harkless, who they tried to play and couldn't, and Chris Silva, a prospect they had essentially given up on and whom had been passed by their first-round pick until recently – for Victor Oladipo, a motivated Victor Oladipo, Trevor Ariza, and Bielitsa, with the potential of adding two guys in buyouts, okay, after buyouts, which may be LaMarcus Aldridge. I mean, you, you really can't add a guard now, but what if you added Aldridge and Cousins? Yeah, with I mean, two oh, man. I just think the their ability to inject life into a roster that severely needed it, I think that we need to acknowledge that the fact that they saw that and they executed it is um, is good stuff. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure Andy had a lot to do with it, so he won't want anybody mentioning it, but there's no way that this probably could have gotten done without him. So, uh, the, Heat, the Heat has some assets in that front office. All right, again, check out our sponsors, bstevr.com. That one's free. That's our simulation. Uh, you can run anything in the NFL soon in the NBA. Prizepicks.com, mybookie.ag, the code five. We'll be back tonight, even though we're tired. Have a good afternoon. Thank you for listening to the five on the floor on the five regional sports network. 